Oh, hopefully. Wait, gotta check if my stream's active. Yes, it is. Okay, well, time to mute and listen to Blur Song 2. The best team in the NFC. But one of the best teams in the NFC versus one of the best team versus one of the worst because they bet were apparently number six. But like, look, the best team in the e like look. These are the only two. Like this is the best team of NFC West versus the third place sixth. Person to get into barely get into the wild card. Dun, dun. When I've been having that go, and I've been having to get all those right. This is the scariest thing because if I lose to these guys, that will make them go to the to the championship game. I got my head checked. I got some bow check. Kick us out. Newberry, no!
Yeah, when I hear what I feel. When I feel heavy metal, woo! I am nine pins and nine needles, woo! We're a lion and I'm easy. All of the time, but I am never sure why I need you. Saints are the best two teams in the NFC. So it could be Seahawks Niners or Seahawks Rams or it could be Niners Saints or wait or Ram Saints. So fans. Oh my god, the best team in our division. The best team in my division I beat. Oh, that was also a close game. No, wait, is it? The, it can be a rematch of 2019 Super Bowl. It could be the Niners Chiefs or it could be the Niners Dolphins end. So in 1985, the 49ers beat the Miami Dolphins 38 to 16. The Niners' last Super Bowl win was against the what? <laughs> That's not even close. Nineteen ninety four against who? The Forty Niners went up against who? It was the Niners versus the Chargers, and we won by 49 points. And the Dolphins are the second best team in their division. And they beat the Texans barely. Ooh, let's see who's gonna win. Who will win? Who will win? <gasps> yeah! The Niners went to the Super Bowl! Let's go! I, I just realized this is the one season where we don't have Kevin Welch. Who's in the Pro Bowl roster? It's like Walter's holding us back. Walter's holding us back. Mm. 
Woach and what's his and um Kenny Marco Kenny were holding us back from a Super Bowl. Marco Kenny was one of the main reasons we made it to the Super Bowl. No, he wasn't. The year we made it to the Super Bowl and won, Marco Kenny was barely a factor that game in, in any of the games because it was the guy next to him and the other people around him in the offensive line were the main game changers for that. Holy crap, Marco. We had to get rid of Marco Kenny and Kevin Roach to become a Super Bowl champion team. The guy has lost two games in a row before making it here. Two. And now the 49ers are going to be going to their Getting their second Super Bowl win under my guidance. Okay, the NFL MVP. Ah, it's not Kroger. Who is it? It's Lane Lloyd. Okay. NFC Offensive Player of the Year. Is, ooh, he came close. He was the fourth. And Mac Borden and, B Borden and, and Callaway. Defensive Player of the Year, Troy Brown, Ryan Sloan, Greg Newton. Those three are literally prospects. Offensive Rookie of the Year, Mac. Bo wow, oh, Mac Borden isn't on here. Decent Defensive Rookie of the Year. Yeah, it ain't gonna be anyone from the Niners. Best Quarterback. Ooh, Cole, you're so close. Best Running Back, Callaway. Yep. Best Wide Receiver. Ah, Artie, you were so close. Board and you too. Oh, Lyman. Green. Yep. Morton. Yep. Defensive lineman. Wow. Hey, Grant got like 15 sacks this season, I think. Linebacker. Greg, you were so close. Why aren't you too? Defensive back. Yeah, like Luke Brown is just naturally close to being the best. He's always gonna be in the talk. Kicker. Nick Greens. Deans. Yep. Here we go. Oh, can get back to the NFL. Coach of the year. Kyle Shanahan is number three. Makes sense. Just the best season he's had so far. Super Bowl media. Don't let your guard down. They let the guard down for a second. The Dolphins take over and they win. Because we're going up against... Like, we went from a team that would, could have been the Super Bowl with... Going to the Super Bowl several times with... One of the best defensive linemen and the best defensive... I mean, offensive player. But we couldn't. We just couldn't make it that far. I'll get rid of... I get rid of the bowl for draft picks. And magically, the team became better. I can tell who was weighing us down. Coming on back going to the Super Bowl with no injuries. No injuries, baby. No goddamn injuries. When I feel a happy man at all. I'm not playing the Super Bowl. I'm going to sim through it. I'm just going on to here so I can get the entire thing set up so it sims. So I can see all the scoring and everything. Look at that. Kroger wants his second bowl, Super Bowl ring. Because everyone else is go aiming for their first. I think a bunch of other people... Almost everyone on the team except Sean, um, Callaway, Sean, Kroger, Callaway, 
and one other person. Um, Green. Sean, Callaway, Green, and Brown, I think, are the only people without a Super Bowl win yet. Don't risk the one. Okay. Is this probably a blowout in the Super Bowl? A little Super Bowl blowout from the Niners. The team went the call that okay, they finally scored. But the Niners were being called the worst team in the NFL. You know, that made it to the playoffs. Like they were sixth rank. And then they beat the best team in their division. And then now they're beating the Pro Bowl to the second best team in the NFL. 52 to 21. That was a literal 31 point win game. Like, Dolphins, come on! Like, you can tell how shocked the team is. Like, holy crap, we just won another Super Bowl? So let me see who just got wings. So Kroger got a ring. Got his second ring. Callaway got his second ring. And Freya, if I'm correct. Already got his second ring. Wait, no, his first ring. Mac got his first ring. Jared got injured, but he got his first ring. Anthony got his first ring. Jones got his second. Bush got his second. Sergio got his first, I think. Anthony got his first, I know that. Jones got his first. Morton got his first or his second. Dale probably got his second. Green got his second. Theo got his first. Sloan got his first. Brown got his second. Ford got his first. Brown got his first. Derek got his first, Jaden got his first, Cedric got his first, Greg got his first, Victor got his first, Deshaun got his first. Wait, how long has he been on the team? Probably second. Holly, no, wait, yeah, definitely got his first, so Holly got his first, Jonathan definitely got his first, Greenard got his first. Andrew Ferguson got his first. Marquez got his first. Sergio probably got his second. And Washad got his first. Kicking got his first. You know, got his second. Punting got his first. Kick return got his first. Punt return got his first. He's like, yeah, all these guys just got their first ring. Because the, I got rid of two major key points of the team. And I was like, okay, yeah, we got to build a team around these guys. And I do that, and then we keep losing. So I'm like, okay, then I'm cutting them both. Now let's build the team around everyone else. Let's build it around the flesh, flesh flood. The new guys. And then we get our second wing with me under management. Wagging lights, let's go. Win Super Bowl, win the Super Bowl in an online le league. That's exactly what I did, baby. Contract extended. Nine million a year. Yo, they better be paying me that much. I just made it to the Super Bowl, baby. So there are people I didn't sign, but the only people I didn't resign are like the new guys. It's like. Yeah, Kroger and Casey did their best. Wait, wait, wait. I want to know who are the Super Bowl MVPs. Season recap. Kroger was Super Bowl MVP. Yep. So, we won the Super Bowl in 2035. 2035, too? Twenty 
And then before that... Wait. Was, yeah, back in like 1994. Yep, 49ers won with 49 points. Steve Young. Like Nate Paul, like dear God, this team made it to the Super Bowl and won without Marco Kenny and Welch. What, what are the injuries? Injury report. Who is out? There's three. Um. Jared was only out for the game. The game. That's all his injury was. Like, dear God. That was not a fair game. That dismantled them and probably made them cry. Okay, yep. I ain't taking a wide outside linebacker in with the first overall pick. It's a higher chance of picking someone better. I have the first overall pick and the, and the last pick. Nice. Woohoo! Okay, I, I want to see the 2023 retirement. And of course, I'm going to the 49ers because I don't know who might have retired this year. No one retired from the Position changes? None. Play ready? None. Clap to squad. Okay, there we go. Yeah, let me. Coach only resigned people. Oh, release the or punter. We resigned him. Okay, we just took our one of the people from our practice squad. We resigned Justin Callaway. It's like yeah. We only cut a punter. Maybe we just released a punter before we made it to the Super Bowl. I didn't like roll over to my bed head area. When I feel happy, heavy bed. I don't feel. What is something I can get? Way early in the draft. Like, yeah, wide receivers. Anchor wide receivers. I guess. Combine results. Ooh, that's good. He's good. So, yeah, yeah, yeah I'm taking him. It's like, yeah, it's like, that's all. Yeah, those are all the main guys I'm getting. Everyone else I get is, like, just an add on. It's Trevor Lawrence. Dom Cooper. Any young guys? Like left tackle, right tackle, middle linebacker. Positions I don't need. Send them to the draft. None of those are what I need.
effects. That's how it's going back. What are those called? Practical? Yeah, that's practical. That can be great. Or practical, whatever that's called. It's like, no, that's practical. When I hear the heavy metal, whoa! <laughs> this captain is an A. So I can't wait to see his captain. There's no chance of taking a second round or like a second or third round projected guy the first. Is the game betraying me again? I don't need an why outside linebacker. Make my selection, please. Oh, damn. <sighs> Someone did. This guy's projected day three. I'm still taking him now because I don't want someone to steal him for me. The funniest part is my team should not have been able to make it that far. Like people are like, oh yeah, they can't make it that far. So we were literally the Super Bowl underdogs that won it all. I might get that quarterback. Okay, quarterbacks. Okay, yeah, now they are all just projected day three. Is there like anyone down here? Like strong arm, projected to go up by 109 spaces. Short, like, oh, he's got something good. Like, I need a guy who could properly replace him, so like, improviser. Mm hmm. Doesn't seem too good. Deep back. Like, this guy, that guy can only throw it deep. All my plays are shorter, screen passes, like this one. Maybe. Probably, like, a 64, 65. Ain't gonna be that highly rated. Do we know you always can get a that guy's gonna be going to the final round? I can get him later. Like that guy is not very good. Neither was he. Are all these guys just horrible wide receivers? Okay, give me this cornerback. Pink Pinkney. Like this guy seems like he can be good. Like you move him around to like slot or like safety. I meant to go to I'm an idiot. I just went to that again. Go try and take all their picks. <laughs> Pick player. Tell me that wide receiver is going to still be here. Wide receiver? Well, I can take this guy, but he'll be my guy to like, get the ball and run. If he isn't going to be used that much, he's just going to be the um, kick and punt with runner. Yes. Playing Madden. Good night. Good night. Oh, uh, let's go take your makeup off.
I didn't get it all? <sighs> Eric Clawson, predicted to be undrafted. Got him late six. I thought I got it all. <laughs> there I am. Okay. Mom. What? Can you look at the screen real quick? I got a guy as good as Kittle late in the draft like the Niners did with Kittle. You wanna know why I was shocking that he was so late in the draft? Kittle was one of the captains of the 49ers now. And he doesn't drop a pass when it comes near him. Try to get this part right here. Don't do that. I'm trying to get the crease without getting shit in your eyeball. Okay. Do you have something to clean my face? Not like that. I need to dry it off. Stinky food. Don't stay up all night because you gotta get ready for school. I know. Stupid school. This Titan J Jack Baffer Baker trade offers. Want Quint Sanders? He's part of the Super Bowl champions team. I want to give him a 77 and a 7th round pick. 74 and a 73. Or 74, 64 and 6. No. I ain't taking those. Those are horrible offers. For a guy a part of, I don't know, the Niners. After they just run the Super Bowl because he can just blast through people. I don't even think he was a part of the team on the Super Bowl. It's like, it's like, <laughs> Justin, oh yeah, I did draft him, but this guy, this guy is going to become amazing, like look at that, it's 82, 88, 83, 71, 67, 54, 80, 59, 65, 58, 53, 57, 65, 64, 71, 65, 62, 72. <laughs> so did I just get a tight end who's better at being any other position but tight end? I'm about to move this, I might move this guy to running back. Like, I might move this guy to running back to see how good he does. A little bit faster, I think. Okay, so watch this in the next lesson. Big Spooky month with lyrics. <gasps> yeah! This is meant to be the lineup now. Tight end. I want to see how this guy does. Okay. 
he'll be behind Ferguson. And yeah. Spooky month is here. And it's spookier than ever. When it turns October 1st, Spooky month consumes the earth. Schools and ghosts and skeletons out to get ya. Furby punches, hanging grabs, spooky toys in every shop. Candy canes and spooky fun can upset ya. Everybody loves the season. There's a universal reason. Spooky kids and spooky moms will celebrate the spooky song. Tell your neighbors, tell your friends, tell grandma till she lives again. It's spooky month, so now's your chance to wave your arms to spooky land. Spooky movie marathons are the only thing that's on. You can watch the Ooga Booga 1 through 16. Games are way more scary than they are in January, but for kids like me and Skid, they get tricky. Hey, 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 h
internet, welcome to Film Theory, the show that knows that a family is just a group of people who live together and have the same lawyer. Ladies and gentlemen, it happened. The new Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared TV series has finally Brand hit the airwaves and it is game. great. To catch you up, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, or DHMIS for short, started as a series of YouTube videos that took Sesame Street and Jigsaw and then made the two of them kiss. The YouTube series followed three protagonists named Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and Duck as they yep. went on adventures, learned important lessons about things like or then injected pure nightmare fuel into our eyeballs with imagery like this the series concluded in 2016 most of us thought that it had entered the great youtube playlist in the sky lost alongside niga higa and jenna marbles faded to occasionally pop up in recommended feeds from now until the heat death of the universe whenever the algorithm sensed that we are starting to get nostalgic or at least that's the way it was supposed to go until don't hug me did the impossible and got a tv show earlier this year the creators managed to wrangle together a real six episode dhmas tv series on the british channel 4 and after watching it i gotta say it nails the tone of those original YouTube videos, all without feeling held back or tied down by them. In fact, it's clear that while the aesthetics look the same, the series has moved on. The yeah. calendar that appears yeah. in every episode has moved yeah. from the original June 19th date yeah. that it was stuck no, on to June 20th. It's a turning of the page, a symbolic new leaf. And whereas the original series was all about the corruption of art and children's programming, this new TV series seems to tell a more personal story about these characters, because they are actual real characters now. No longer are they just symbols for kids, or creators, or ducks, I guess. These three now appear to have histories and lore. In fact, when you start piecing this puzzle together, the story of these three characters is tragic. They're a trio that's trapped inside of a repeating cycle built on one woman's guilt and pain. And if I'm right about this, at least one of these three characters is dead. So wakey wakey gang, it's theory time, just theory time, you'll see. For the first part nah, of the that. show, things proceed no, normally, or at least as normally as they can for the so world of DHMIS. Our three characters start each day in some mundane way before eventually being joined by the Teacher of the Week, an anthropomorphized object that's there to share some twisted lessons about topics ranging from jobs to death to electricity. Oh sure, there's some weird bits mixed in there, like Yellow Guy's dad Roy viciously ripping apart a creepy family, or Duck killing off his own doppelganger, but nothing that's yeah, out of the ordinary. But then comes episode 5 where we see the reality of the show starting to fray. In this episode, our main characters are confronted by an old living train, basically the nursing home equivalent of Thomas the Tank Engine. Thomas the Hover Around Engine? Anyway, at one point, the teacher turns into a car and then promptly dies. So, our heroic trio does the reasonable thing and hops into his rotting carcass to take a road trip. And it works. Not only do they manage to drive past the desiccated remains of their original TV pilot... Oh, I'm sorry, that place doesn't exist anymore. Oh, well, what happened to it? Just shriveled up, I reckon. They manage to drive so far that they break through what appears Turns to be a down. simulation. They leave their cartoonish world behind only to end up in a realistic dystopian one. We can't go back. I'm not going back into that house. Guys, <laughs> there's something out there. <laughs> Lost and confused, they set up camp for the night. As they sit around a fire contemplating their new world and hoping that the neighbors will show up to help, a mysterious voice begins to echo through the night. Suddenly, Yellow Guy sees something out of the corner of his eye and we cut to black. Only to then watch as a mysterious hand rolls a model of their car up to a dollhouse. The same house that we've been watching at the start of every episode. The journey always ends up Back. Now, this is important because earlier this very episode, the characters had already talked about the episodic nature of content, and how everything always winds up resorting to a status quo. All we do is, is sit around and then some guy comes and tells us about banks or vegetables. Nice to be back at home, eh? What, what are you talking about? We didn't even go anywhere. And sure enough, when we rejoined them in episode 6, the characters are reset right back to where we started, none the wiser about their junkyard excursion the night before. And that's when things start to really pick up. At first, the season finale's all about electricity. Our three friends get an electric bill and they don't want to pay it because electricity is silly stuff. It ought to be fun. So of course, their fuse box, Electracy, comes to life to teach him more about the wonders of electricity and how it pops. Unlock dual double XP with a Call of Duty combo or Mountain Dew at Little Seasons. Pizza, pizza. Turf down. During Walmart's Black Friday deals for days, every Monday is a hey, man. deal. Damn. You get a $79 HP Chromebook plus other hot deals. 
Join Walmart Plus and you can shop online seven hours early. Head to Walmart's Black Friday deal for days. Powers phones and televisions and radios. And yes, even your shredder. When the lesson suddenly turns to portable sources of energy like batteries, Yellow Guy gives us the surprise revelation that E2 is powered by batteries. No, I am have batteries. Okay. Which is a strange detail that we'll come back to. Regardless, his current batteries are old, corroded, and clearly out of juice. So Duck switches them out for electricity. Suddenly, the once doofy yellow guy is juiced up to the max, and instead of being dim-witted, his mind explodes with intelligence. Equipped with this new awareness of the world around him, yellow guy becomes the first person of the trio to realize that they're only on the bottom floor of what's a multi-story house. Yellow guy climbs the stairs to discover the big boy room on the second floor. Inside, he finds older versions of Red Guy and Duck that are able to learn not just one, but two lessons in a given day. Same thing? Yeah, we're big boys. Big boys. Big boys. Trying to be that nice. But at last, he continues up to the third floor, where he finds the more advanced Bigger Boys room, housing even smarter and more futuristic versions of Red Guy and Duck. Eventually, he's turned off by their heartless and cruel experiments, things like electrocuting an innocent lump of living flesh. So for a final time, Yellow Guy leaves the room and moves up another flight of steps. At the top of the house, things are extremely different. Here, Yellow Guy finds a door labeled Leslie, and we immediately get an answer as to what that means on the other side. It's made clear that this is the woman that we heard reciting the rhyme at the end of episode 5. It was also her gloved hand that was resetting the dollhouse back to square one at the end of the last episode. But now, the dollhouse is open, and we can see small figures of the trio inside, recreating the exact events that we're watching play out in this episode. Yellow Guy is obviously full of questions, and Leslie promises to answer all of them, provided he plays with the dolls. You help me tidy things up around here, and I'll help you. Promise. She then produces a large leather-bound book covered in a wacky-looking code before sending him back downstairs to his friends. Right as he's about to read it, Duck and Red Guy rip the batteries out of his chest in order to power the house. Yellow Guy forgets what the book was for in the first place and decides that it's something incredible. The season ends as the three friends cheer at the destruction of the book, so close to answers, or even an escape, but instead trapped inside their ceaseless prison once more. Making matters worse, Yellow Guy never realized that there was yet another level to the house that he never got to. It's an incredibly sad, surreal ending to the season, which leaves us on this unusual cliffhanger. Can Yellow Guy make the journey up the stairs again? Based on the pictures that we see behind him hanging on the wall as he goes up, we know that he's made this journey before. Hopefully there's a second season where he's able to do the whole thing again. In the meantime, though, we're left with a lot of questions. The first and foremost being who or what is Leslie? She's the only human character that we meet throughout all of DHMAS, which in and of itself is odd. Her design design is also noteworthy. She's a bizarre mix of puppet and flesh. She's clearly a human, but her coat makes her look like one giant muppet that's covered in fur, and her face has been stitched and scarred like a creature that's been sewn together. More importantly than her design, though, she acts like the puppeteer for this world. She's the one that's turning the crank at the start of every episode. She also appears to be controlling the actions of all the others through her miniature figurines. And when one of the dolls breaks, she has a drawer full of replacements. Nope. Oh, sorry. Don't worry, I always make sure that I have plenty of backup. Well, I suspect that I know what's going on here, and it all begins with one key line. As Leslie sends Yellow Guy on his way, he asks whether he can stay on the top floor with her. She immediately rejects the idea by shouting, You're not my real son! <laughs> Joking. At first, this just seems like a random outburst, a combination punchline jump scare to keep us on our feet. But I think that this is actually the key to understanding right. everything about this new series. Taking Leslie at her word here, Yellow Guy isn't her real son, but he's close. You see, I suspect that Yellow Guy represents a Leslie's real son. A real son named David. A son who died. In episode 2, Death, we see the name David etched onto the grave where Duck gets buried. Why does it say David? Later, we see a large group of human mourners show up in the kitchen for David's funeral, where they again mistake Duck for David. We're just friends. Friends of David. 
wasn't cold, David. So what would make me say that yellow guy's David? Well, take a look at what's stitched into yellow guy's overalls. On the front pocket, there's the large letter D. And at the foot of yellow guy's bed, the letter D again. In episode three, family, yellow guy is even given a special locket with the letter D engraved on it. Over and over again, yellow guy and the letter D are connected. D for David. But the connection between the two goes well beyond just the letter. Going back to the death episode, when our happy trio first show up at the cemetery, the coffin assumes that yellow guy is the one who died. Don't tell me. I'm good at this. It's you, isn't it? And throughout the rest of the series, we watch as both flies and worms are attracted to yellow guy and no one else. It's almost... Spectrum presents Stream Home Makeover with JoJo. Does downloading a slow roast recipe video take longer than making it? Then you need a Spectrum Stream Home Makeover with the fastest, most reliable speed and 99.9% .9 network reliability. Switch today almost like he's a dead, decaying body. Plus, there's a strange moment in the intro of episode 5 where Yellow Guy seems to dissociate and remember something about his past. I'm the one who had a dream where there was stuff like there was another me. He's clearly remembering a dream where he saw another version of himself. He's seeing David. The same thing happens again later in that same episode when he looks out the car window. When I look out through it, it looks back in through me. He's connecting with a past iteration of himself, with David. We're also explicitly told that David is not Duck's name. Why does it say David? Huh? That's his name. What? That's supposed to be your name. We also know that Red Guy isn't dead, based on his ID. Don't be silly. You don't die for ages. Aww. So by process of elimination, if one of these characters is representative of David, it has to be Yellow Guy. This may also explain why Leslie says this to him when he first enters the room. You're one of my favorites. Sounds almost motherly. But this is far story. The tragic yep. twist of the tale is that we know exactly what killed David. He died in a car crash. In episode 5, when Red Guy tells Yellow Guy that they're going to be part of a community, Yellow Guy fantasizes about living in a new city named Mulhoven. He imagines joining a neighborhood, befriending the people of the town. Yellow Guy then moves into a new home where Red Guy's his neighbor and Duck is his pet. Everything is great until a clergyman offers Yellow Guy a bird as a welcome present. The bird flies away and Yellow Guy gives chase into the street. From there, you can guess the rest. Yellow Guy is hit by a car. I suspect that that dream sequence may be more true to life than we initially expect. Listen to the narrator of that little story. Oh, morning. Here in Mulhoven, Newtown. It's Leslie's voice. You've got plenty of reading to do. In fact, it's Leslie screaming for Yellow Guy to get out of the street. Oh, careful. <laughs> And the reason she's screaming? Because she's the one in the car. Leslie killed her own son, David. Ah! What did you say? Yeah, you heard me. Leslie killed her own son in this accident. Why do I say that? Well, first of all, when we meet Leslie in episode 6, her face is covered in stitches. Almost like she went through an awful accident herself. Secondly, take a look at the license plate of the car that the gang drives throughout this episode. It spells Leslie. And most importantly of all, we know that David wasn't the only person in the family involved in a car crash that day. At the end of episode 3, as they're wrapping up what they learned about families, Yellow Guy describes a family as a group <gasps> and die on the same day in the same style of accident, but in different locations. Unless his father Roy also died in a car accident that same day, which seems pretty unlikely, I suspect that this line's meant to describe Leslie, who metaphorically died that day. And you see, that gets to the core issue here. That's why I think she's created these characters, this dollhouse, this world. It's to escape from that trauma. The sad truth of Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared is that it isn't the story of three wacky puppets learning disturbing life lessons. In reality, it's the story of a mother grieving over her dead son, a woman that is stuck in a spiraling cycle of guilt, creating playthings that represent him so she can impart all the lessons that she would have taught him if he had lived. And she has dozens of backups to ensure that she never loses him again. And for as much as Yellow Guy reminds her of her lost son, he can never truly be the real David. You're not my son. Don't hug me, I'm scared. It's a weird name, right? We've never really stopped to question it, have we? It's always just kind of in there. So yeah, DHMAS, that's the name. Duh. But really think about those words. Don't hug me, I'm scared. It's a reference to someone so damaged, so hurt, that they're afraid of something like a hug. They're scared of affection, of love of opening themselves up to someone else. That right there, that's, that's Leslie. Afraid to love again because she's afraid of being hurt again. But I suspect that in order to move forward, to get to that final level of the house, that 
that's exactly what needs to happen. A hug. Leslie to forgive herself, and Yellow Guy to give her a hug. Then, and only then, will both of them be able to transcend, to move past their stagnant lives inside that house, and climb to the final level, to finally be free. But hey, that's just a theory. A film theory. And a guy. Struggling with reception. You need a better network. And Verizon's new Welcome Unlimited plan for just $30 a line. Verizon for $30? Internet. Welcome to Film Theory, the show that's been ruining puppets for you since 2016. Theorists, it is back. The OG of internet horror, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, has returned. Now, if you're not familiar with the series, I can't really blame you. It's been a long time since we've gotten any sort of update. Three years, in fact. To catch you up, Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared, or DHMIS, is a YouTube series created by Becky Sloan and Joseph Elling, where puppets learn important life lessons about creativity, mind being creative, love, uh, and nutrition. Easy. To eat all that, you'll end up with your gums all grey. Uh, something's wrong. Well spotted there, Duck. Something is very clearly wrong. At a glance, the show feels like your typical Sesame Street-inspired children's program about learning. In fact, the visuals are such a good imitation of a kid's show that YouTube marked one of my DHMIS theories as made for kids and tried to shove the thing onto the kids' app. At which point I was forced to write an explanation to the machine gods that sometimes the visuals of something don't match the actual content. You see, by the end of every episode, things go horribly off the rails, and lessons about love suddenly turn into cult recruitment tools. Nutrition facts wind up with characters eating each other. The whole thing is a disturbing satire on the nature of kids' programming. Luckily, my, um, thoughtfully worded letter to YouTube got him to see reason. The flag was removed, and a generation of toddlers was spared from witnessing this. <laughs> Kids app, sure. In 2016, after six episodes, the creators literally pulled the plug on the series. But by then, it had already cemented its place as an internet classic. Things were quiet until 2018 when DHMAS uploaded a trailer for a TV show based on the series. Finally, we were going to get to see more from this twisted world. And then nothing. For years. Nothing. At least until now. On June 19th, DHMAS uploaded their first new video in three years. A new trailer titled Fly, confirming that the show would finally see the light of day in September. But you know what? I don't want to wait that long. I want to get started now. We know from past theories that there's a lot more to DHMAS than meets the eye, with each episode being a commentary on everything from children's programming to international politics. And I expect nothing less for the full-length TV series. So despite the teaser clocking in at just 50 seconds, we've analyzed it frame by frame, and I think it's clear what we're in for. A scathing critique on the state of world politics. I expect this new season of DHMAS is going to ultimately boil down to one key message. There is a core problem that everyone's ignoring, despite it being right in front of our eyes. And by ignoring it, the world is literally headed towards disaster. We are caught in a cycle of mistakes. And TV, the media at large, is not helping the problem. Yep, got all that from 50 seconds. So come on, friends, there is so much learning to do. As a reminder, our Three friends in DHMAS are Red Guy, Yellow Guy, and Duck. Based on our past news, though, we know that they're not just characters in a kid's program. Red Guy is the creator of the series. He was a normal guy with an office job who dreamed of creating his own kid show. Oh, that's you, Shitty. Hey. The whole thing is a bust until Yellow Guy's dad, Roy, comes in to financially back the show. Which seems like it should be a good thing until he starts filling it with more and more ads. <laughs> 
Was there an ad there? There was an ad there, wasn't there? <laughs> no. Art imitating life. Oh, it just gets more and more meta. Anyway, our previous theories concluded that DHMAS was a commentary on how the need to earn money corrupts creativity and how corporate interest tends to distort the education in children's programming. Eventually, the red guy has his mind blown when he discovers that he can make the show himself, releasing it on the internet for much cheaper while still maintaining its artistic integrity. Red guy pulls the plug on the TV show when he sees the harmful effect it's having on children as symbolized by yellow guy. Red guy re boots it on a shoestring budget, but with the freedom for his pure, creative voice to be heard. Also, uh, there's Doc. Never really had a good explanation for him, but yeah, he's an yeah, actor on the program, too. And that's largely where we left off. Like I mentioned earlier, there was another trailer named Wakey Wakey released back in 2018, but that's since been removed by the creators, instead replaced by this new trailer, Fly. So, what horrific life lessons are in store for us in the new series? Let's check it out. We open on some sort of structure in ruin, rocked by either an explosion or a natural disaster. It seems to be a house both. based on what we see scattered around the uh, both. Now what? Now let's let's learn about you guiding. Okay, you guiding. You just literally closed it and... Oh, there's oh, another key. Wait, why are these keys down there? I don't know. That, that was weird. Did you drop Look, it? Yeah, yeah, seven yeah, from Sanders. Yeah. Okay, now bring out the engine cord. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. Give me more. Mine is being creative. Gotta be a way to hire it, right? Um, 
Trade offers for Quentin <laughs> Sandler. <laughs> <Sandra. laughs> <laughs>